What's up? This is uh, Tarek here from uh, SmartBuyTrends.com, and uh, this is the Wahoo Kicker 2020 or Kicker 5. This is the same Kicker Direct Drive trainer that you know and familiar with. Wahoo has been making small and tiny improvements to the Kicker, making it slightly better every year without making big and drastic changes. And the new Kicker is more accurate, calibration free, comes with new access feet a built-in port for wire connectivity to Wi-Fi to help eliminate dropouts. And this option isn't ready yet and will require an additional accessory to connect it to your home Wi-Fi network. But this feature is there to help eliminate some of the frustrations many cyclists who experience ANT plus or Bluetooth dropouts. However, it is not ready yet, but I'm curious to see how this gets implemented. Personally, since switching to Bluetooth, I hardly ever experienced dropouts. So I'm curious to know if dropout is an issue for you, would you be willing to upgrade and would you be willing to spend an additional say $80 or $100 for an accessory that will give you that wired option and give you that peace of mind? Let me know down in the comments. But other than that, it is the same kicker, same $1,200 US price tag, same maximum 2200 watts, same 20% 20 maximum incline and the same 16 pounds flywheel, same bike compatibility as previous models and still comes with an 11 speed, 11 to 28 ratio cassette installed. And the kicker uses ANT plus and ANT plus FEC and three Bluetooth connections. Now, unlike ANT plus, Bluetooth can only connect to one device at a time. So for example, if you connect your kicker to the Wahoo app on your phone to check on the settings or update the firmware and forget to disconnect it, you won't be able to pair it to another app like Zwift, for example. That can be annoying and uh, you can spend a lot of time trying to figure out what the problem is until you realize, oh wow, I connected it to the Wahoo app and I forgot to disconnect and that's why you're not able to connect to Zwift, for example. So having multiple Bluetooth connections eliminate this issue and you can connect the kicker to multiple apps at the same time if you would like. So you can run the Sufferfest, for example, uh, or Trainer Road and Zwift all at the same time if you want to. Wahoo added cushion access feet to the Kicker 5. Uh, these cushion feet basically made from some uh, rubber type material allow up to five degrees of tilting side to side. And the access feet comes in three stiffness option, uh, easy, medium, and hard. And to change the access feet, all you need to do is replace the top cap. And these top caps are weight specific and you need to select the appropriate top cap for your weight. Wow has a little disclaimer or in the manual to use the appropriate top cap uh, for your weight. But by default, the kicker comes with the medium one installed. Now, if you are familiar with previous kickers, then you know how rigid this trainer can be. And the only movement you will feel is the natural flexing from your bike, particularly if you have a carbon bike. But the idea behind these feet is to give you a little bit of motion and the more natural movements on the bike by minimizing the pressure touch points. And uh, that results in less fatigue and the ability to stay on the bike for a lot longer. Now, these feet are not going to provide you with a noticeable rocking motion. And uh, just because the rocking motion isn't noticeable, it doesn't mean it's less comfortable or more comfortable than previous kickers. If anything, it didn't feel that much different to me. However, there is a slight and a no noticeable side to side movement. Does it make it feel more comfortable? I'm not totally sold on that. Like I said in other videos, for a comfortable ride, you want the bike to move under you and with you and not force in a static motion one way or the other. So I won't go and spend my money on a new kicker just for this feature if comfort has been an issue for you. The good news is these feet are compatible with previous uh, kicker models, except the kicker core and the kicker snap. And uh, you can get yours for about $80. Another feature Wahoo added to this year's model is the auto calibration. And this is probably the most notable update to this trainer. So one of the best features of a smart trainer is their ability to measure power produced by the cyclist. But for the most accurate power measurement, you need to perform a spin down calibration every few weeks or so, depending on the type of trainer you have. Generally, this involves warming up the trainer for about 10 minutes or so, then performing the spin down uh, procedure using the Wahoo app or any other compatible app that lets you calibrate your trainer. It generally takes a few seconds to run, but it's still that one more pesky thing that you have to do 
Also, many people aren't even aware or know of a spin down procedure. So to alleviate this, the kicker automatically runs the calibration for you every few minutes. And this is important for a few reasons. One is you don't have to worry about running it yourself and interrupting your training session. Also, you don't have to worry about if the trainer needs to be calibrated or not and if the power measurement is accurate. Also, it will continuously override any altered calibration value that you might have unintentionally or intentionally altered during the spin down procedure. Wahoo claims the kicker is accurate within 1%. So this is 1% from the point it measure power, which is the hub, not 1% when comparing it to other power meters that measure power from different points, such as cranks or pedals. In my test, I compared that against my Asioma dual based or dual pedal based power meter and two different cranks power meters installed on two different bikes. Overall, it was within range and consistent as you see in this ride I did on Zwift. Uh, the kicker normalized power for this four ride was about five watts lower than Asioma and three watts lower than my crank base power meter, which is as expected. Now in erg mode, it was quickly responding to changes going from around 100 watts to about 400 watts within three to four seconds. Also using different gears did not affect how the trainer responded and continued to measure power accurately. Also, it was no problem for the kicker to hit very low watts when using very big gear, which can be problematic for some other trainers, specifically trainers at the mid price level. The kicker also measures cadence and it was very good. Very few issues where it over or underestimated cadence and I'm talking about once or twice during a ride. As for noise, the kicker is a quiet trainer and only as loud as your drive terrain. Wahoo added some padding on the legs to dampen the noise and vibration, but if you live in an apartment, any trainer with a physical flywheel, including this kicker, will generate some vibration. So depending on where you train and the type of flooring you have, most likely it's not going to be an issue, but it's just something to think about if you think that might present some issues for or bother some neighbors if you tend to train super early in the morning or late in the evening. And uh, one more thing, uh, as for the flywheel issue, and I feel like I need to address the flywheel that issue that plagued the 2018 model, and I know it impacted a lot of you, uh, and I'm probably gonna hear about it in the comment section, but I think Wahoo addressed it, and uh, I know this because I really have not heard much complaints since late 2018. And I have put a lot of miles or a lot of hours on this one, and uh, have been using it uh, as my primary trainer for a while now, and I've had no issues. Okay, the Kicker Direct Drive Trainer has been the leading smart trainer in this market and uh, Wahoo has been slowly making improvements to it, making it quieter, better, more accurate. Fundamentally, there isn't much different between this year's Kicker versus last year's Kicker. Still the same premium Wahoo Kicker that you are familiar with. Auto calibration is great, possibly a tiny bit more comfortable and uh, we'll see what happens with this uh, built-in port. Okay, there you have it. Hope you enjoyed this video and uh, stay tuned for more videos and also make sure to subscribe and check smartbiketrainers.com for all the Smart Trainer deal page for all the holiday deals coming up this year and uh, every day. Thank you for watching and uh, see you guys in the next video.